Hi everyone, so I am a machine learning engineer at Per Vertical. We have our booth in the hallway, so you can uh, come and chat later after the talk if you want to. So, what we will be talking today about? Uh, uh, we'll discuss what's needed to uh, uh, represent uh, a model, and uh, we'll check uh, that in regards to a few, a few different types of models. So we'll delve a bit deeper into tree-based models. Uh, and we'll uh, briefly uh, overview on, on one format that's uh, used for neural network uh, model serial, serialization and uh, exchange between different platforms. So, uh, we all know that uh, uh, trends are that uh, machine learning models aren't getting uh, smaller, they are getting uh, much bigger, so I believe that efficient representation and uh, inference is important. And I'll be focusing more on the smaller ones in this talk because, uh, in my opinion, we'll still run uh, most of the uh, world's machine learning, uh, machine learning applications. Uh, so this talk uh, will, will not include uh, what's popular today, GPT and large language models. Let's see, what, what do we need to represent a model? So let's, let's uh, start with the simpler, uh, simplest probably models, one of the simpler ones. So let's take a look at linear model. Uh, if we find a tutorial uh, on, on internet uh, on how to implement and run inference on uh, with using linear regression with Python, you'll probably find something like this. So you'll be using scikit-learn library, you'll create a model, you'll fit it to the data, you'll uh, save it with pickle or joblib most likely, and during inference you'll unpickle it and uh, run predictions on that model. Now this is uh, fine and everything works, but uh, this uh, brings quite, quite a lot of dependencies uh, during the inference stage. So, for example, if we install uh, just scikit-learn with all these dependencies, it will be close to 300 megabytes uh, to do inference on linear model. Then in the, in the meantime, what we need is actually uh, just a few numbers to represent that model. And we could, uh, in this simple case, we could just hard code them or store them in an array or JSON or something like that. And we don't need scikit-learn for that, we don't need even Python for that, it could be done in any language. And so these, uh, these, four, these few numbers are called parameters of a model. So why, why we need efficient representation? It's uh, not always that we have uh, beefy servers to run inference on. And uh, sometimes uh, it, uh, uh, well, basically there are two, two popular cases that I see. So uh, we run in constrained resource environments. So for example, if you run uh, in serverless function like AWS Lambda, which we'll check later, uh, we pay per milliseconds of uh, gigabytes of memory used. So every, every increase in efficiency and uh, memory usage will save us uh, qu quite a few euros. And the other case is if we run the models on some uh, edge IoT devices, embedded devices, so we will probably not be able to s strap uh, NVIDIA 4090 on some drone. And also if we need uh, to squeeze every bit of performance possible, we need to uh, uh, check uh, how, how models are uh, represented in code as well. So let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, tree-based models. Uh, they are pretty popular and uh, probably most popular for uh, tabular data sets if you want to run some models in tabular data sets. So we usually are consisted of uh, several trees which uh, every node is, uh, takes some kind of input variable and splits it uh, based on, on, on input value, if it's larger or lower than, than the input value. And we get uh, a number of those trees and uh, uh, we run inference through them and in the final stage uh, the results are aggregated through those trees. So uh, the structure is uh, mostly the same with the uh, uh, most of the uh, tree ensemble models, uh, the difference is how those trees are uh, created and how the final result is aggregated from those trees. 
So we have uh, there is this uh, very interesting library called Trilight, and it's essentially a toolbox to uh, convert uh, tree-based models from uh, uh, different kind of uh, frameworks we use to train them to a common representation, and then to compile them to a shared library. And uh, we provide tooling to use that uh, shared library and run inference from various languages. You can run it from C++, from Python, from GVM languages. So this is, uh, this is uh, what a tree uh, uh, compiled to, uh, transpiled to C source looks like uh, using tree light library. <laughs> So essentially, what, uh, what, how we can represent uh, tree-based models in code is, is just a bunch of if-else statements. And yeah, uh, we check if the value is missing, we check if uh, the value is lower or higher than some threshold, and based on that, we select uh, branches. Now, what uh, our, our CPUs are good at these days is uh, they have this, uh, uh, feature, uh, which was already mentioned in the keynote, we uh, predict this, which branch uh, would be used, and uh, uh, we try to free, free, prefetch the instructions needed to run, run further branches. And uh, the Treelight tree -light library has a few nice optimizations. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of them, which is exactly that, we can help uh, uh, our CPU with uh, that branch prediction and we can annotate uh, those if branches uh, with uh, which uh, uh, branch is more likely to be selected. How, how we do this is uh, we, uh, you provide the training data set to the library and uh, based on that training data set we check which branch uh, would be more likely to be selected. And uh, the one that uh, gets uh, more gets executed more times based on the training data set gets ex executed that is expected to be uh, selected, and the one that uh, gets uh, lower samples gets annotated to be uh, less likely to be selected. Uh, we also provide uh, another uh, another uh, optimization is uh, we. Uh, convert uh, uh, values uh, on which the branch selection is done from floats to integers. Uh, this reduces uh, executable code size and improves data locality. And we will check how, how these uh, uh, optimizations, uh, what, what effect do they have in real life. So uh, one thing that I found was useful is uh, running inference on AWS Lambda. So running, uh, running models on, and applications on Lambda is uh, a little bit tricky topic because uh, it, it might feel uh, cheap at the beginning, but, you, but the cost can get pretty high when you get higher throughput. Uh, but for applications which uh, are low latency and uh, require low resources, I, I still find it uh, a nice use case. So uh, AWS Lambda is uh, a constrained resource environment, and uh, but uh, we offer a lot of benefits. It's easy to deploy to them. There are uh, multiple frameworks like serverless or AWS SAM that, that makes that pretty easy. Uh, we provide automated scaling. Uh, you don't need to do anything. You just uh, get enough uh, serverless functions uh, to handle the workload that you have. So if, if your application is, uh, does not require a lot of resources and the throughput is not that high, I believe that uh, it's a very good use case. And even if your application is uh, resource hungry, like for example, running convolutional neural, neural networks on, on AWS Lambda, if uh, it's uh, more like a batch workload, which you need uh, to do uh, not that frequently, in, in some cases, it still, still makes uh, worth to take a look at, at Lambda functions, I believe. But uh, if we try to run, for example, uh, XGBoost uh, on, on Lambda, we get uh, to the first roadblock, uh, all the dependencies that are needed to uh, uh, use XGBoost library uh, take up around 600 megabytes, I believe. And AWS Lambda has a limit of 256 megabytes for uh, regular zipped lambdas. 
uh, this can be overcome with uh, Docker based lambdas, which are allowed to be up to 10 gigabytes in size, but uh, that uh, does uh, include some more complexity to, to the application, to the deployment, and so on. So, what we can do, we can uh, use uh, the mentioned uh, library like Treelight, for example, and compile our model uh, to, to a more efficient uh, format. So let's take a look how, how that is done. Uh, so for example, here we have a pre-trained model which uses SIGGBoost. And uh, we can create a converted to a tree light, uh, intermediate tree light format with uh, one function call. And uh, next we can uh, compile it to that uh, C uh, library also from Python, we don't need to uh, leave Python, we can do that, uh, and we get a shared library. Uh, this uh, this have, has a few caveats, uh, for example, when using uh, in, in AWS Cloud. So if you compile it uh, on uh, lo locally on a MacBook and you try to run it on uh, um, AWS Lambda, it will not work because uh, the, architect the operating system is different. Where so you need to use uh, uh, either you need to compile in some virtual machine or use Docker to do that so that the environment would be the same. Or just spin up a machine on AWS and compile it there. After that is done, we can load it also from Python uh, with uh, a tool called a tool uh, Treelight provides called uh, Treelight to CGen. And uh, uh, yeah, and we can do do some predictions on it, and the result is the same as you was just using Gigaboost. <laughs> and yeah, and we don't need to do any kind of compilation or or, or other uh, other instrumentation out of uh, Python. We can do everything in Python. And the inference code looks uh, <coughs> mostly the same between both. Uh, using Kixi-Boost and using uh, that uh, TCL to Gen library or Treelight library. So it's uh, just uh, load the model, uh, pre prepare the data, run inference, and it's, it's, it's most easy. And uh, let's try to run those lambdas. So I have uh, a bunch of them deployed with uh, Roy to boost. Uh, the tree light also provides uh, reference implementation in Python, but it's it's a bit slower. And uh, uh, lambdas which use uh, that uh, shared library with and without optimization. So we'll check the, uh, how how we perform in a minute. And let's try to let's try to run XGBoost uh, based lambda. So we have. Uh, Test data prepared, some numbers are going into the model. Uh, this, will, this lambda wasn't run yet, so it uh, started pretty fast. Uh, but this, yeah, this was uh, called start, so we had, uh, it had to load all the code and uh, all the Python modules and model and so on. So it took uh, 1.5 uh, seconds, and the next time it will be fast. So 24 milliseconds, 55, 86, 26, 86, and so on. And if we check the uh, tree light optimized one, uh, so it, uh, yeah, we can also run inference on it. It will also be the first time it will be called start, so it will take some time to load. But uh, the loading itself, uh, this time is faster, so around half a second, so around three, three times faster uh, call start, and the inference times should hopefully also be faster. Yeah, so around 17 seconds to two milliseconds, sorry, milliseconds, not seconds, yeah, and if you would do this a few uh, few thousand times, you would get uh, a distribution of uh, latency looking something like this. So uh, the slowest one is that uh, Treelight provided reference Python of the implementation. It's, it's not optimized. Uh, XGBoost is pretty fast by itself. It's, it's definitely not slow. So on uh, P90 uh, percentile is around 90 milliseconds. 
if we compile it to C uh, code and use the shared library without optimizations, it's around 50 seconds. And if we use both optimizations, it's around uh, 30 seconds. So around three times faster compared, compared to raw XGBoost. And the average duration is uh, even, uh, the difference is even more. Let's return to the slides. So uh, in, in real life, use case, we used uh, a model which uh, uses XGBoost and uh, run in, runs inference, and this is uh, uh, the costs of running it in production. So it's not, uh, the throughput is not super high, but we get from around uh, 150 to around 200,000 requests per day. Uh, so around two requests per second and it costs to run this model around six dollars per month. So, so like a Mac, Mac burger. So it's, it's not, the costs are pretty cheap if you uh, find the right use case for, for lambdas. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to touch uh, briefly, but it's uh, probably deserving uh, a t a talk on itself, is uh, uh, there is this uh, standard ONNX, Open, Ex Open Neural Network Exchange, uh, pronounced ONIX, if I am correct. So it's uh, a similar uh, uh, serialization format uh, for uh, neural network models, but it also uh, works with uh, classical machine learning models as well. And it's uh, supported by a lot of companies. A lot of companies are contributing to it. Uh, originally, it was uh, developed uh, by Facebook, and uh, later it was uh, given to Linux Foundation. So uh, Linux Foundation now oversees the, the project, and there are lots of contributors. So what, what it does, it uh, allows uh, conversion from various uh, uh, machine learning and deep learning frameworks to the ONGS format representation and uh, it also allows backwards conversion although it's not uh, not as well uh, yeah, supported in some cases but uh, it works uh, from on onyx to uh, other libraries as well so for example if you find some model in model zoo which is only in tensorflow but you are running uh, uh, torch serve for a uh, torch model inference in production, you can use it to convert to Onyx and use that to run it, or convert uh, from TensorFlow to PyTorch using Onyx form. And uh, the format itself is using uh, protobuf under the hood, and it's, uh, it represent represents uh, a graph of computation, uh, computational nodes. So uh, uh, it supports a wide variety of languages, uh, architectures, hardware, <coughs> platforms. So it's uh, useful if you uh, are running on, uh, for example, embedded devices, or if uh, you are uh, uh, running on some accelerators that are not that widely supported, or if you train models and develop models in different language uh, than your uh, inference infrastructure runs on. So it's uh, very easy to convert models uh, from, from uh, other frameworks to Onyx. It's usually just a few lines of code. And it's, uh, it's just, uh, just uh, as easy to run them also. So this is a uh, uh, working example of uh, Lambda code with, uh, which uh, takes an image input. Uh, it takes a chart of uh, uh, of um, some stock uh, prices and it predicts if the stock will be up or down next day. So, uh, and it also has similar optimizations uh, that uh, compared to uh, the tree light format that, was, uh, that we talked about for tree based models. Uh, 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 but uh, yeah, we will, I believe we are running out of time so we will not, not dwell on that too much. And uh, the performance is comparable to other frameworks uh, based on my usage and based on what, uh, what we say. We say that the performance is higher when those optimizations are used, but it's a bit tricky to compare a neural network performance where a lot of variables included. So that's it.
have any questions? How, is there any optimization you can do besides uh, just converting to Onyx? Like, does the Onyx itself support some optimization? Yes, yes, we support quantization of parameters, uh, constant folding. We support a bunch of optimizations, and uh, uh, the Onyx is. Uh, quite a big ecosystem. So we support the Onyx runtime itself supports some optimization and there also are external tools that uh, uh, help optimize uh, models uh, in Onyx format. So we do, we do quite a lot of things. But it's not uh, trivial to use them. It's, uh, it requires uh, a bit, uh, sometimes changes to the neural network architecture. Some, some optimizations are easy, but yeah, it's more complicated than with the uh, Three light example. Um, you just run, run one, one function and that's it. Uh, have you considered uh, setting up a job to trigger Lambda every, uh, let's say, 10 minutes to deal with cold start? Or is it not a problem for your use case? For, for our use case, it, it was not a problem because in production we get constant flow of requests, so, and it's not that uh, critical to have it uh, sub-seconds every time. So we haven't done that, but yeah, that's, that's what people do. <laughs> that's de definitely possible. And uh, the, the next question is, how does your feature select, or you don't have to use it, because the, the API call for uh, inference has everything. Yeah, so in that uh, specific use case, we didn't uh, need to use it because the feature preparation was fast and pretty easy, but it's uh, one of the drawbacks in using, uh, in, in doing optimizations like that, which work uh, on uh, machine learning models, because sometimes the data preparation step takes longer and is more resource consuming than the inference of the model. And it's usually harder to optimize. You need to pre-calculate uh, pre the features, like you said. So we haven't used it, but uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, a feature preparation is, is a large topic and it influences latency and everything. So we did just in the same lambda on the input arrival. Okay. Uh, were you able to compare the inference performance between uh, TreeLight and Onyx? for the same tree-based model? Uh, I haven't, yeah, I haven't done that. Uh, I need to do that. <laughs> Great, any more questions? I did uh, compare Onyx to PyTorch for uh, convolutional neural networks. So on CPU it was a bit faster, on GPU it was a bit lower for the other project that I did. But I haven't used those optimizations that uh, Onyx uh, enables to me. Great, thank you very much.